is Vincent Masterson. He is the International Education and Training Advisor of COST, an organization located here in Calgary dedicated to transferring water and sanitation technologies to the third world. Please welcome the Vince. Hi, so I work in international development, and uh, in this photo here, you can see me working with uh, some of our partners in Haiti. And I'm working, I'm working with local trainers on how to develop education materials. And the reason why I'm working with them is because they know the Haitian context a lot better than I do. Uh, so essentially, what I'm trying to do is train them, train trainers, in order to be able to train other trainers. So uh, speaking of trainers, uh, this is Shirabib. Shirabib is uh, works for one of our partners in Afghanistan. And uh, I've been working with him for quite some time, but I'm kind of hoping uh, that soon I will not have to work with him ever again. Now, let me explain a little bit about what I mean by that through this presentation. So when we talk about international development, uh, it always comes back to basic needs of having clean water. If you go back to the poverty cycle, you can really see that when people drink dirty water, they get sick. When they get sick, they can't work. When they can't work, they can't afford to send their kids to school, and they can't afford to pay their medical bills. So therefore, the cycle simply continues. Now, how do we solve this, you say? Well, the answer is quite simple. People need access to safe water, right? But the solution is easy to find. Now, the challenge is finding a sustainable solution that will last for a very long time. We don't want to go in and just give a solution and then walk out. We need to be there for the long term. And um, so we're very good in the Western world of having this, this notion that if there's a problem, we simply need to build and find an innovative solution. So if people need clean water, let's build a well. Uh, if people need access to education, let's go build a school. However, in five years time from now, that well, if it breaks, who's gonna be there to fix it? And so when we visit uh, developing countries, a lot of times, including myself, you feel a little bit guilty. You know, you see little girls that are six years old that are helping their, their parents doing chores and, and cleaning up water and, and bringing it to the household when really they should be in school. So here, people wanna help, and that's perfectly fine. I wanna help as well. And, but the thing is, the help that we provide doesn't always have the intended outcome. I know many, many people that will spend thousands of dollars to fly to a developing country to, to try to provide and give some help. However, when you fly to another country and you try to build a school, the consequences of that is you're actually taking jobs away from the local people. And the second sad truth is that a lot of countries that we work in, in developing countries, they don't have the education system in place. So a lot of teachers that would be teaching in that school are not going to teach there because they're not getting paid. So therefore the school may actually become abandoned. So instead of, I, what I suggest is instead of building things, I think we should build opportunities for people. And so in Canada here, we've had many, many opportunities, uh, mostly through education. So we have gained more or less the skills and knowledge that we need to thrive in an environment. And I think that we need to adopt that process and, and, and that concept to international development in, in a better, more holistic way. So um, the old saying of, you know, give a man a fish, feed him for a day, teach a man a fish, feed him for a lifetime. I think that's absolutely true and it really resonates with me. But we've used the saying so many times that we've kind of forgotten its true meaning. And we need to go back to that and really use it and, and, and apply it to all our models in international development. The problem first lies in numbers. So when you're giving money to a charity or an NGO and you want to help out, you, you want numbers that mean something. So say for example, if you're going to give $1,000 for an NGO, you know that it will lead to 50 water filters. Now if you lead to, to skills and knowledge, that's very difficult to quantify and have an impact. What is $1,000 in skills and knowledge? Well, this is an example here of uh, uh, what used to be uh, a hand pump water well. And simply because they didn't have the local skills and knowledge to maintain and fix it, it's now become abandoned. So that initial solution is not long term and sustainable. And now it's become just a watering hole for, for cows and other animals. So what I think we should do is invest in skills and knowledge for people so that if something breaks, they can fix it themselves. They don't need any other help. Local skills and knowledge. And, um, and I think that's extremely important. <laughs> and alongside local skills and knowledge, I really think that we need to have local materials. So in the case, we work a lot with biosand filters. And biosand filters means that you can build the filter 
anywhere in the world, meaning you don't have to import any materials whatsoever. So local skills and knowledge, local materials, and that model will mean that they don't need us, and I think that should be our goal. Now this is an example of uh, a woman in Zambia. Her name is Mary Banda, and when we first met her in 2006, uh, she has six kids, she's widowed, and they were all getting six from, from dirty water. All of her money was going to try to pay for hospital bills. It was really horrible. So she, she had enough. So there was a workshop being done by one of her partners in Zambia, and she attended, where she learned how to build her own water filter and how to treat her own water at the household level. So not relying on greater big industrial treatments, but at the household treatment. And it really resonated, and it worked. Her kids finally got healthy, uh, they weren't sick anymore, she was saving money, and she really she was so uh, amazed by this that she wanted to share with her community. So since then, she has built over 5,000 filters and went to 360 uh, households to teach them about clean water and sanitation. So that 1,000 bucks to 50 filters really has a great impact in this case. So I really think that education is the key uh, to really gain some traction in international development. And that is what's going to lead to sustainability. Now, I'm not saying that infrastructure is bad. Infrastructure is crucial. But we can't forget about the local skills and knowledge that's needed. Now, one of my great colleagues, his name is uh, Tal Wosley. Uh, great quote. He says, I believe in the inherent capacity of people. I am not here to save anyone. And that really resonates with me because it's not up to us to save them. We're simply there to give a little guidance and support to really give the, the, the skills and knowledge that they need for them to thrive and have those, uh, those skills and knowledge. So if I come back to Shir Habib here, a uh, trainer in Afghanistan, I really hope I'm not going to be working with him anymore because soon enough, he's going to be the one that's training trainers to be better trainers. Thank you.